Hello everyone, in part 2 of this Pathways series, you will learn how to replicate and propagate pathways using the Pathways web server. This tutorial will also provide a short overview of the basic tools that the Drawing Canvas offers in Pathways. Before watching this video, be sure to watch the previous tutorial, Pathways Part 1, as it covers how to use the Navigate, Browse, and Search features found in the Pathways web server. It also covers some basic pathway creation concepts which will not be discussed in this video. For the purposes of this tutorial, I will demonstrate the replicate and propagate features as a guest user using the Citric Asset Cycle or TCA pathway as an example. These features can also be accessed by registered users and are the same in use and functionality irrespective of what kind of account you have. The only difference is that registered users can make their pathways private. Private pathways are not shared on the Pathways public repository and cannot be altered or edited by anyone other than yourself. Making your pathways private is completely up to you and based on your personal preferences. Now let's get started with the tutorial. As you may recall in part 1 of the Pathways series, the replication and propagation functions allow Pathways users to expedite the pathway creation process. The replication function allows an already existing PathWiz pathway to be copied or replicated so that it can be altered or modified in any way you desire. The propagation function, on the other hand, allows an existing PathWiz pathway to be propagated across other species. In other words, a pathway that was drawn for one specific species, say human, can be automatically copied and modified with all the enzymes transporters, and other features for another species, say mouse. First, let's learn how to replicate a pathway. This is a useful tool if we want to edit certain parts of a pre-existing pathway without having to draw the whole pathway from scratch. Replication also allows you to make modifications or improvements to a lock pathway found in the pathways repository. For this example, let's replicate the TCA cycle in humans. On the pathways homepage, Click on the Draw tab and navigate to the search bar. In the search bar, type Citric Acid Cycle. A list of results should populate at the bottom. To aid in the search, we can filter using keywords and specify its type and species in these fields. Be sure that these options, Guess and Example, are unchecked for better results. After clicking Apply, Navigate to the result entry that has a PW, short for PathWiz, ID of 000005, and select the green Replicate button located on the side. Once the pathway type has been selected, we will be redirected to the new pathway page. Replicating a pathway creates a new instance of a pathway, which will be shared on the PathWiz public repository once created. By default, some of this information is auto-generated, such as the name, type, and species for the pathway we're replicating, so we don't need to fill in those fields again. We can, however, change the name of our newly replicated pathway here. Scrolling down the page, we can see a number of optional fields that we can fill or edit. These include Guest Identifier, Description, Create from Pathway, entry, its e-value, and toggling if it contains reviewed Uniprot proteins or if the proteins are not from Uniprot. Under the References section, we can add references by clicking the Add References button. Here we can provide a citation manually or provide its PubMed ID. This tool is incredibly useful if we want to link our pathway to a published article. When you're satisfied and have completed the required fields, click on the Create Pathway button. Depending on the size of the pathway, this creation process usually takes one minute on average to complete. Once done, this redirects us to the drawing canvas that shows our newly replicated TCA pathway. That's it for replicating a pathway. Propagating a pathway is very similar. Pathway propagation is useful if we want to obtain similar pathways across other organisms without having to draw all the details from scratch. Let's propagate the TCA cycle from human to yeast. Navigate back to the TCA cycle search results and locate the pathway with the PathWiz ID 
a PW000005 and click on Show. Next, select the Propagate button located on the top right hand corner. Once selected, this should redirect us to the Propagate Citric Acid Cycle page. Here, we can specify which species we want this pathway to be propagated to by scrolling down and selecting it here. Like the replicate function, we have the choice to toggle if it contains reviewed uniprot proteins or proteins that are not from uniprot. When your satisfied completed the required fields, click on the Propagate Pathway button. Depending on the size of the pathway and species of which you want it propagated to, this usually takes on average 3-5 to five minutes to complete. The reason why this function takes so long to complete is that it has to search through the entire Uniprot sequence database for yeast, identifying the most similar sequence, and then generate the necessary information for that protein. Once the propagation step is done, we will be able to find our newly propagated pathway uploaded on the PathWiz public repository. Now we can click the Draw button. Once clicked, this redirects us to the drawing canvas that shows our newly replicated TCA pathway. Later in the video, I'll teach you how to use the drawing canvas in much more detail. That's it for pathway propagation. Now that we know how to replicate and propagate pathways, let's learn some basics on how to use Pathways' drawing canvas. The drawing canvas allows you to edit existing pathways or to create new pathways. Because Pathways has so many pathways already generated by its user community, it is often easy to edit an existing pathway rather than creating one from scratch. For this video, we will work with an existing pathway. When viewing a newly replicated or propagated pathway in the Drawing Canvas Viewer, we can edit, make modifications, and add components to it. Above, you will see six tabs. Pathway, Add Process, Add Vacuous Element, which includes compounds, element collections, nucleic acids, proteins, and edges. Add Visual Element, Edit Selected, and Other. In the Pathway tab, you can edit details of the pathway or export an image of your pathway. Using these three tabs, you can add processes vacuous elements, or visual elements to the pathway. The Edit Selected tab is a feature that allows you to edit details of a component, and the Other tab allows you to customize the size of your pathway. In part 3 of this PathWiz tutorial, I will show you how to add processes, vacuous elements, and visual elements in much greater detail when constructing a pathway from scratch. First, when opening the Drawing Canvas viewer, you may notice that while you edit and add your pathway components, the pathway may appear too large or too small based on your monitor or your monitor settings. This version of PathWiz does not currently support a zoom in or zoom out feature, but one workaround is to adjust and play with the zoom settings on your browser. In this video, I'm using Google Chrome. Once you have resized the pathway to your preferences, you can also adjust the grid size on the canvas. The grid area represents the white background that contains our pathway. To adjust the grid or canvas size, simply click the Other tab and choose Fit Canvas to Pathway, which will automatically adjust the canvas to fit around the elements. Alternatively, you can play around with the grid dimensions by clicking Other and then change canvas size. Configuring the size of the canvas usually takes a web server some time to process, so please be patient. If we want to know more about the components or components of a reaction in a pathway, double click the component of interest. This expands the side menu that shows the color template is using, the biological state if previously specified, the Z index, and the reaction it is involved in. The Z index describes how far forward or backward it is placed respected to the other objects. Having a higher Z index 
means that it will be placed in front of other objects that have a lower Z index. For more information about the reaction a given component of interest is involved in, click on its hyperlinked reaction name. This shows more details and provides an overview of the reaction as well as the other components involved in the reaction. If we want certain components or edges of the reaction to not be visible, we can toggle the hide option on the side. We can also alter the Z indices for each reaction component here. Enzymes can be added into the reaction by clicking the Add Enzyme button. When we have made our changes, we can update reaction, discard changes, or remove visualization, which removes our reaction. Removing a reaction can also be done here. Once removed, the reaction is no longer visible on the canvas. You can also use Pathways' undo feature here to remove or undo a reaction, remove an enzyme, or undo a pathway modification. In summary, we learned how to replicate and propagate pathways in PathWiz. We have also explored some of the features in PathWiz's drawing campus interface. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and please stay tuned for more videos to come.